These are some of the most iconic TV cars of the 1960s and 1970s. The TV and auto industries have grown side by side for 70 years. So it's only natural that the vehicles driven by characters of the small screen are as etched in our memories as the costumes they wore and the places they called home. Here are some TV rides that still get our motors racing. First on the list is the 1955 Lincoln Futura, used for the Batmobile in Batman. Having survived its tests in Hurricane Road, the Futura is taken to the Dearborn Proving Ground. Test driver Johnny Stoppa flicks a switch to lower the plastic canopy and prepares to test the car on the high-speed track. Legend has it that well-known California car customizer George Barris had only three weeks to come up with a vehicle for Batman. According to personal accounts, Barris repurposed a Lincoln Futura concept car, which he had purchased for $1, into the foundation for the Batmobile. The reason this car captured the hearts of show fans and automotive buffs alike is its Batlight looks at every angle. From back wing fins, both front and rear, to a formidable bat-like face when viewed from the front. The car also sports a cockpit-like canopy, reminiscent of another flying object, right down to its bat logo mag wheels. The Batmobile possessed so much of the show's essence and cool gadgetry kids love that eventually viewers considered it a character in the series. Next is the 1974 Gran Torino used in Starsky and Hutch. Talk about a high-speed tomato! The Ford Gran Torino, with its signature white vector stripes and muscle-bound 351 Windsor V8, was as much a star in the late 70s series as its crime-fighting detectives, played by Paul Michael Glaser and David Soule. But the relationship between the three co-stars was tortured at best. Glaser, credited with giving the Beast its lukewarm nickname, disliked the Torino because of its poor handling. I vowed secretly to David that I was going to do everything in my power to destroy that car, he said during a 1999 interview for a British documentary. David Soule likely didn't argue. He was frequently jostled during the chase scenes due to the slippery vinyl front bench, a problem later remedied when it was swapped for bucket seats. The series went through 10 Gran Torinos through its four-year run, and Ford eventually built 1,100 tomato replica Gran Torinos for sale to the public, powered by the same chesty V8. When the series ended, the striped tomato did not rev quietly into that good night. One showed up on the pilot episode of the then-new 1979 program, The Dukes of Hazard, And the Torino was introduced to a new generation in the 2004 Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson, Starsky and Hutch film homage. Next is the 1978 Checker Taxi Cab from the TV series Taxi. From the opening sequence of a taxi cab cruising across New York's Queensboro Bridge, accompanied by the show's dulcet theme music composed by jazz great Bob James, the 1980s series Taxi went on to elevate more than a few careers into the pantheon of TV stardom. Judd Hirsch, Andy Kaufman, Danny DeVito, Tony Danza, Mary Lou Henner, Christopher Lloyd and Jeff Conway. Beyond these stars, an unsung hero of the show had to be the Checker Cabs, so often in the background and sometimes foreground of most shots throughout the four-year series. Always shown with typical NYC wear and tear, never getting the attention they deserved from garage mechanic Latka Gravas, played by brilliant comedian Andy Kaufman. The Yellow Cabs nevertheless left an indelible mark in the collective conscience of those who love the show. Next is the 1921 Oldsmobile Model 43A, or 46, from the Beverly Hillbillies. A TV gem likely better known for its theme song, rather than the actual show. The Beverly Hillbillies was a popular situation comedy in its time, and became a cult classic in subsequent syndication. The show's famous set of wheels is a dilapidated truck the backwoods but oil-rich Clampett family drove cross-country from the Ozarks to reach Beverly Hills, California. The truck was created by none other than legendary TV and movie car customizer George Barris. 
According to a book about Barris, he found a 1921 Oldsmobile touring car behind a feed store in Fontana, California, already discrepant enough in its own right. The truck is now on display at the Ralph Foster Museum at the College of the Ozarks, a donation from the show's producer Paul Henning, who grew up in nearby Missouri. Sources differ on the Oldsmobile model, some calling it a 43A and some a 46, so there was likely more than one version created for the show. Next on some of the most iconic TV cars is the 1951 Ford F-100, used in the TV series Sanford and Son. One of the best known and loved shows of the 70s, Sanford and Son was a primetime vehicle for comedian Red Fox and on-air son Damon Wilson. The father-son junk dealer duo had run-in after run-in with all types. From incredulous customers to Fred's sister-in-law and Lamont's aunt, Esther, Fred's arch nemesis. Esther was a foil for many of Fred Sanford's catchphrases. Produced by Norman Lear, known for his other groundbreaking show, All in the Family, Sanford and Son took place in the Watts neighborhood of Los Angeles. Fred's rusted-out red Ford F-100 appeared prominently in the show's opening theme. Next is the 1976 Ford Mustang Cobra II, used in the TV series Charlie's Angels. The sweet handling Mustang II Cobras. No other domestic car in its class gives you all this standard. Spoiler, stabilizer bars, staggered shocks, rack and pinion steering, steel belted radials, and four on the floor. That's why Cobra takes the curves like a snake. When America needs a better idea, Ford puts it on wheels. Once upon a time, there were three little girls who went to the police academy and then got hired by a mysterious rich guy named Charlie, who sent them off to fight bad guys in three separate Ford cars. There was the orange Pinto driven by Kate Jackson's Sabrina, the smart practical angel, and the hardtop yellow Mustang driven by street smart orphan Kelly Garrett, Jacqueline Smith. But the angel ride that left the most lasting pop culture impression was the super sporty Mustang Cobra II driven Driven by Jill Monroe, Farrah Fawcett, and later her sister Chris, Cheryl Ladd. I hope we did the right thing leaving Sam there. Well, it's her home. What else are we going to do? With its hood scoop, front and rear spoilers, quarter window louvers, and wide blue racing stripe peeling across the top, it perfectly embodied the sisters' spunky athleticism and visual flash. And it didn't hurt that the young male fans who tuned into the leggy lady detectives with shampoo commercial hair were likely to find the boss ride equally as sexy. Indeed, in 1976, the show's popularity helped Ford sell upwards of 25,000 Cobra II appearance package options, more than five times what it expected to move in a limited run that year, according to Mustang Monthly. The car's appeal has endured. In 2013, Greenlight Collectibles released a successful die-cast miniature of Jill's original Cobra II. Next is the 1982 Pontiac Trans Am used as Kit in the TV series Knight Rider. We could all use a fast, flamboyant sidekick with a dry sense of humor. For crime fighter Michael Knight, played by pre-Baywatch David Hasselhoff, that pal was Kit, a modified Pontiac Firebird Trans Am that did it all. Fired rockets, sniff bombs, spray tear gas, ski on two wheels, voiced by William Daniels, a.k.a. Dr. Mark Craig of St. Elsewhere, Kit also sported a red scan bar peeking up from the front hood, dubbed the anamorphic equalizer, which served as its eyes, pulsing when in surveillance mode. Fun fact, it was modeled after the roving eyes of the Cylons from Battlestar Galactica. Also by show creator Glenn A. Larson, to make Kit appear to be driving itself. One version included controls in the passenger footwell, operated by a carefully hidden stuntman. Many of the nearly two dozen kits used for the 1982-86 series were obtained for the production. And while most were destroyed after the show by virtue of an unusual pact between GM and Universal Studios, five or six are said to remain, most in the hands of private collectors. Next on the list of the most iconic TV cars is the 1983 GMC Vandura, used in the TV series The A-Team. 
In the words of Sergeant Bosco, I ain't getting on no plane. And why would an aviation-averse Vietnam vet, played by Mr. T, adorned with beefy gold chains and a mohawk, bother flying when he could tool around in a customized GMC cargo van? From 1983 to 1987, B.A., short for Bad Attitude, and his Special Forces Mercenary Pals would chase down bad guys, while simultaneously on the run from the U.S. government for a crime they didn't commit. Through B.A., a master mechanic tricked out his G-15 V-8 with red stripes, a rooftop spoiler, and mag wheels. Inside featured shack carpet, a custom gun storage case holding a Ruger AC-556 automatic rifle, and a rotating array of tools of the trade, from surveillance equipment to disguises. Craig Baxley, an A-Team stuntman, says GMC supplied eight vans for the run, some for action sequences, others for hero shots. Up next on the list of some of the iconic TV cars, the 1969 Dodge Charger from the Dukes of Hazard. Barely sneaking onto the list of the 60s and 70s TV cars, the outrageously popular show The Dukes of Hazard ran from 1979 through 1985. The comedy series pitted Southern cousins Bo, John Schneider, and Luke. Tom Wopat Duke, who are on five years probation for running moonshine against a police department more crooked than a hound's hind leg. The show spawned many beloved characters, including Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane, James Best, corrupt commissioner Boss Hogg, Sorrell Brooke, and cousin Daisy Duke, Catherine Bach. Although the strong cast created an entertaining show each week, the true star of the Dukes of Hazard eventually became the customized bright orange 1969 Dodge Charger the boys used to evade the law and ultimately do good. The Duke brothers' stunts are stuff of TV legend, speeding, skidding, and jumping the bright red car through and over almost anything imaginable, constantly evading the Hazard County Police or Boss Hogg's henchmen. Reportedly, more than 350 charges were used and wrecked during the show production, to the point where the producers had difficulty sourcing the cars and had to modify other model years and models. Next on the list is the Munster Coach from the TV series The Munsters. Bring it out, Grandpa! Cannibalized parts from three Model Ts and one hearse combine them in a creepy, kooky way and add details like casket handles, blood red velvet upholstery and spider web headlights and you've got the Munster coach the ideal car for a spooky sitcom family whose patriarch worked in a funeral home and looked like Frankenstein a creation of renowned Hollywood car customizer George Barris who was given three weeks by the studio to make it the 18 foot long coach nonetheless included many hand formed elements like the brass radiator and fenders. Powered by a 289 cubic inch Ford Cobra V8 engine, the long, low-slung ride was a tight fit for star Fred Gwynn, who stood seven feet tall in his Herman Munster costume. The seat cushion had to be removed for him to get behind the wheel. Last on the list of some of the iconic TV series cars is the 1972 Ferrari 365 GTS 4 Daytona Spider used in the TV series Miami Vice. In the first two seasons of Miami Vice, super smooth fashion forward detective Sonny Crockett, played by Don Johnson, drove a super suave black Ferrari Daytona Spider to render himself inconspicuous as he went undercover in Miami's high-flying drugs and prostitution scene. At least, that's what audiences were meant to believe. The iconic Italian sports car manufacturer had actually declined a request to provide authentic vehicles. So, the production company bought replicas built on top of a Corvette C3 chassis and modified with fiberglass body panels. Ferrari then sued the replica builder over the fakes, but offered Vice producers two free genuine Testarossas if they agree to lose the imitation spiders. So, in Season 3's opening episode, a missile took out the ersatz Daytona, explosively fulfilling the producer's agreement with Ferrari. Well, there you have it, some of the most iconic TV cars ever. Heads up for a future video of the most iconic movie cars. You'll surely be entertained. Let us know what you think. Leave a comment below. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified of future videos. Once again, thank you for watching the Boca Brothers Car Reviews.